I'll introduce uh, Christian Veert. So Christian, um, I said you were the, you're leading, you're a member of the engineering team. I know you lead the, uh, the team who are building JavaScript support on Gual VM. So maybe you could introduce yourself a little bit more. Yeah, hello everybody. Thanks, Sean, for introducing me. Uh, right, I'm leading the Gual VM JavaScript effort as well as our Ruby engine and our regular expression engine. So that's the, the kind of the three teams I'm responsible for. Right, so a lot, a lot of different language runtimes uh, on GraalVM. So I, I would say that's fair to say that makes you an expert in the ins and outs of how, this, how to make that work. Um, so uh, I'm going to hand it over to you, Christian, to present uh, on on uh, on Nashorn and, and JavaScript and GraalVM. And at the end, I'll come back and we'll take some questions and answers from the, uh, the attendees. Okay, you. thank you, thank you, Sean. So. Uh, what's on our agenda today? Um, I'm talking about GraalVM and the JavaScript NAS one that Graal, uh, the JavaScript engine that GraalVM supports. And we titled it that you can move from NAS one to GraalVM. Uh, why is that relevant? Why might that be relevant for your use case? I guess most of our attendees know, but in JDK 11, the NAS one engine was deprecated and it was actually removed in JDK 15. So in the future, there won't be any default JavaScript runtime in the, in the JDK, in the JVM. And luckily on the GraalVM side, we do have a great JavaScript engine. Uh, we call it GraalJS internally, but it's the JavaScript engine on GraalVM. And today I want to show you how you can use it to replace existing NAS on workloads what you need to do to move an existing NAS on application to GraalVM to our engine, and maybe talk a bit about advanced features, for instance, our Node.js support. So let me dive into the JavaScript engine. GraalVM, I assume most of you have heard of, is a high performance next generation Java virtual machine. So it's coming really from the Java world and is able to run each and any Java application that you have. But when writing GraalVM, we realized it can do way more than just executing Java with good performance. And so we started to build other language engines into GraalVM. And JavaScript, the JavaScript engine is actually our most advanced language engine that we have. So on GraalVM, it gives you the possibility to execute very modern, very up-to-date JavaScript. So each and any uh, recent modern JavaScript application you can execute on GraalVM. I'll go into details on the, on the further slides. JavaScript on the GraalVM also has the huge advantage that you can use it together with other programming languages. So be it our host language Java, or other guest languages that we support on top of GraalVM. For instance, Python, Ruby, R, or LLVM Bitcode. All that can interact with, with the JavaScript engine and can exchange not only data, but also can exchange code. So you can call from one engine into the other. I will also show that later. Of course, in JavaScript, you can also benefit from all the advantages that GraalVM gives you, for instance, regarding tooling. So all the tooling support that you have readily available in GraalVM, you can also use in JavaScript and also in those polyglot cases where you interact between JavaScript and other programming languages. So it's really one platform. And once you are on it, it gives you lots of advantages and lots of embedding use cases, as I will also show later. So let's jump into JavaScript uh, about what does, our lang what does our engine actually support. And here the, the very good news or exciting news is that our JavaScript engine is ECMAScript 2020 compatible. ECMAScript is the specification of JavaScript. It's standardized by uh, ECMA or ECMA. And there Oracle actually joined recently the technical committee 39 that is specifying JavaScript in order to give us better access to those resources to better learn and understand what we need to support there. But we really support all the current specification, all the modern 2020 spec of JavaScript, of ECMAScript is supported in our engine. 
And the little plus means we're constantly working on new features, everything that is coming up in new in the next release, in the 2021 release, we are already working on that. Some features we already support. And we have a, a flag that you can use when you use our engine, this js.ecmascript version, where you both can use older legacy versions when you're still on ECMAScript 2018, or to get a preview of the, of the upcoming version when you go to the 2021 version already now. To, to compare that with Nashorn, Nashorn supported ECMAScript 5.1, which was released in 2009, and it has some limited ECMAScript 6 features. Um, you can actually see that on the right-hand side, this is an external project, the Kangax compatibility table, where you can see uh, that GraalVM in different versions supports around 98% of, of the tests that this, this project runs, which is perfectly in line with, for instance, Safari or recent versions of Node.js, while uh, Nashorn here called JJS only supports a small little fraction of the actual ECMAScript 6 standard. And JavaScript has evolved a lot since ECMAScript 6, of course. So we, we do, we invest heavily in getting it fine, in getting it compatible with the recent versions of the spec. And we ensure that each and any modern JavaScript can be run on this engine. Now talking a bit about those polyglot language features. So being on a Java application, it is very important for us to of course interact nicely with Java. So we made sure that as you you're used from Nashorn and Rhino before it, you can start JavaScript scripts from Java, that those JavaScript scripts can operate on Java data and call, can call back into Java. So call Java functionality or provide data back to Java. So here on the left-hand side, you see uh, two smaller examples, one where you in JavaScript code, you can access Java classes, instantiate them, call functions on them, and still get very good result, very correct result, of course, on the JavaScript side. And below it, you see how you would call such a script from, from Java, from Java code. On the right-hand side, you see how you can interact with other programming languages. So that's, that's not typically possible in, in NAS1. In this case here, we first call to Python and execute a very short Python script, admittedly. It just creates an array in Python language, but still this array is returned to JavaScript and you can access it as if it was a JavaScript array, as if it was a native array. And this is actually very, very fast. There is no marshalling overhead there. We don't need to convert anything unless it's really, really necessary. But in this case, it's just a flat array that we can easily access and access with very good performance. Second example, you see here that you can call to the R programming language. And in R, we create a hundred random values. And then back in JavaScript, uh, we access just one of them and display them here. So it's very easy to interact between different programming languages and to go from one language to the other, to provide data from one language to the other, to use libraries that were defined in another language. And that's one of the, the goals that we have to enable those polyglot language features that you don't necessarily have to stick to one programming language, but you can use whatever library, whatever code is best fit to solve your problem and more interactively switch between programming languages in your application. So how is this JavaScript integrated into GraalVM? This is also very important to us that we are a very good citizen of GraalVM. So all the features that you have in GraalVM, all the tooling, all the debugging support that is available, you can use uh, from the JavaScript engine. I put the Visual VM version that, that we ship uh, in GraalVM here as an example, but there is others like NetBeans integration, Visual Studio Code integration. You can debug our JavaScript applications from Visual Studio Code, for, uh, for instance, or from the Chrome debugger tools, Chrome Dev tools. We are integrated or we are integratable into native image. 
So you might have heard of native image. It's a, a cool feature of GraalVM that allows one to ahead of time compile Java code. So when you have a Java application, you can use the native image tool to create an executable out of it, which gives you much better startup performance. So it starts without needing to load the full JVM. It does so internally, but it doesn't actually load it. It just does the minimal thing to get your application booted. And that brings you incredibly better startup performance. And you can fully use that feature together with the JavaScript engine. So you have a Java application that uses our JavaScript engine. It's no problem to create a native image from such an application. And of course, uh, also very important, the engine that we provide as being part of GraalVM can be used in any scenario where you would embed the GraalVM in. So be it OpenJDK, be it the Oracle database, very interesting project, be it standalone in a native image compiled uh, binary, or be it Node.js, which I'll mention later, it's possible anywhere to run JavaScript applications from Java on GraalVM. What about performance? So here I'm comparing against Marsform. And like always, please take each and any benchmark you see with a grain of salt. I'm really asking you to repeat that with, with your application. Uh, what I'm showing here is a very common benchmark set. It's the so-called Octane benchmark suite that Google originally published for, to, compare it, it's, to compare the Google V8 engine. And what you see here is the comparison of, of GraalVM EE 20.2, so the current public version with uh, the latest JDK 11 Nelson version. And you see that even in the case where our speed up is lowest, we are already 50% faster than Nelson. And we have some examples like the, the last one, the Setlib benchmark where we are 160 times faster. So on, on average, on, on this workload, we are seven times faster. Again, it really depends on your workload, but this, this benchmark suite has a large variety of different use cases and we heavily optimize towards very good performance in the engine. And we can, in all, all the benchmarks we see, easily outperform last one. If you see different results, please let us know. We are still investigating, of course, and there might be things we still can optimize, but in general, our assumption is that, that GraalVM JavaScript is always faster than NAS1. So I hope I could convince you that this is something you, you should take a look at, you should investigate for your existing NAS1 application. What do you need to do to actually step from NAS1 to the GraalVM JavaScript engine? Um, overall, we support all the features that Nelson had. So, of course, being fully ECMAScript compatible, we support at least the same set of, of basic JavaScript, and we add all the Nelson's interoperability features, interoperability features with Java, and the, the few language extensions that Nelson added. Most of those features we support by default. For some, you have to set some configuration flags. One thing we added is our own context API. Uh, here on the bottom right, you see how we usually start a new context, so a new script that's wrapping uh, the execution of a script here in this example in JavaScript, but it's exactly the same for, for all the other languages we support. But we do also support the pre-existing script engine implementation. Why we add this new context is it very much simplifies our data exchange between the different programming languages. So when you use the script engine, it's not so easy or it was not so easy for us to optimize this data access between different programming languages. And the context API enables us to do that much better with much better performance. But again, we are compatible with script engine. So if you have an existing application that uses script engine, it will also work on on JavaScript, on GraalVM JavaScript. Of course, there are some differences and I want to, to highlight two major differences. And first, GraalVM 
we really try hard to be secure by default. And what we mean by that is that a script cannot break out of its script context. So by default, a JavaScript script that you start from a context can only access what a JavaScript script typically can access. So its own global scope, its own global variables, its own built-in functions. And you have to explicitly allow it to, for instance, get access to the Java host, to look up classes from the Java host and to exchange data with that. There are more options like allow IO or allow this polyglot access to access other programming languages. So in our case on Gradium, you explicitly have to enable this access. And this is one thing that you might need to touch for existing NAS on applications that you allow this access. On the right hand side, I here have the dot allow all access. That's something that will give, as, as the name says, all access. You don't want to do that in a production setting, I assume, at least not if you execute uh, source code or JavaScript code that you have not fully under your control. So please don't use that um, for any servers that are public or where the user might define his own JavaScript source code. In such cases, you should be more specific and allow specific access only to certain Java classes, maybe to some library that you expose from the Java side. But the nice thing here is that this context API gives you very fine grained control over what is accessible, what is not accessible. And in this area, we're actually right now working on additional memory limits, heap memory limits, so you can specify that four different scripts how much memory they gonna get. So in future, Java, in future JavaScript versions, we will expose that. Another thing is multi-threading. Here the point is JavaScript by design is single-threaded. And most other engines treat it like that. There are options to execute JavaScript scripts in parallel. Predominant version is web workers or worker, worker threads. Unfortunately, Nashorn really allowed unrestricted multi-threaded access. And this is very prone to race conditions and we can easily reproduce crashes in, in the Nashorn engine uh, by, by allowing that. So Gradium JavaScript is very explicit here in allowing multi-threading. So you can run different scripts parallel from Java, but you cannot share JavaScript objects between those instances. So any JavaScript object you create in one engine on one thread has to stay there. On the other hand, you can share Java objects and use this as synchronization between the different threads, between the different JavaScript contexts. So if you want to step from an Arsene application to GraalVM, I really ask you just to just try it out. Download GraalVM and just change your path to point not from the old JDK to our GraalVM bin Java or change your Java home directory, or maybe the JJS executable for Nashorn, replace it with the JS executable in GraalVM. And this might just work out of the box in many cases. Maybe you need to tweak the security settings as, as I just said. Of course, there are more things, more details that you might need to consider. For that, we have a migration guide. Uh, I, I've put the link here, and this covers things like, for instance, JS Adapter, which was a proxy defined by Nashorn, which has since been superseded by ECMAScript's proxy instance. So in that case, you would need to rewrite an existing JS Adapter with an ECMAScript proxy. It's almost the same thing. The change is not very intrusive, and then you're on the safe side and have the full support of ECMAScript. If the migration guide doesn't help you, doesn't answer your questions, please reach out to us via the Oracle support or on GitHub or on Slack. I'm sure we will find a solution for any migration problem that you might have or might find. Now there's a fourth option and I'm, I'm very careful in, in even mentioning that because we, we do have a NAS on compact mode that you can use, but we really recommend this only for testing. In this NAS and Compat mode, we share more things. We provide more things. For instance, we, we do provide the JS adapter implementation in this NAS and Compat mode. But this mode can cause a lock-in in some 
into some design decisions of NAS horn. And that might hamper future evolution. Staying with the JS adapter example, while the proxy really is embedded in the current ECMAScript spec and takes good care to work in each and every situation together with, with all the other features of ECMAScript, the JS adapter doesn't do that. So it, it will forever stay in exactly that uh, support that NAS1 once defined. And there are other internal things that this NAS1 compat mode exposes that, that shouldn't really be exposed to a language implementer or a language user. So I can really only recommend this for testing, for evaluating, for making sure the thing can be migrated to Java, to Gradium, but then you should try not to use it for any production setting. To come to the advanced topics, I, uh, I promised you no chairs on the JVM. This is very interesting for us to run because it allows us to support real modern JavaScript. Most JavaScript users on the web will use Node.js and will use a recent version of Node.js for larger JavaScript applications if they don't use NAS or similar engines. And we do support that as well. So currently our support is for Node.js 12.18. This is the current LTS version or not, not the most recent one, 1219 was recently published, but we are frequently updating, uh, updating two newer versions and we are following the Node.js LTS schedule on that. So the next major Gradium release, Gradium 21 next year, will then be on Node.js 14. We support all the features of Node.js except real V8 internal. So V8 being the JavaScript engine from Google originally used in, in Node.js. So be it MPM, the Node Package Manager, which is fully integrated, you can use native modules even, so modules defined in C or C++. Any debugging, for instance, via inspect, all that is possible. And we really make sure to test a lot of MPM modules. We test more than 100,000 MPM modules and make sure that they are fully compatible with the existing, uh, the official Node.js release uh, according to, to the module's unit tests. So we execute the unit tests both on our Node.js and on the original one and make sure the result is, is identical. And still, you can use all the polyglot features that I mentioned before. So both the uh, interoperability with Java, but also with, for instance, Python, Ruby and the other languages we support you can also use that in our Node.js mode. And that's a very cool thing because it allows you to run a Node.js application in JavaScript, but for instance, still access a Python machine learning library or a Ruby library that you might be using for something. So if, you, if you're into Node.js and have existing workloads there, please try out our Node binary that we also ship with GraalVM. So to conclude, uh, I hope I could show you that Gradium can execute a NAS on applications and is a good way forward to migrate existing NAS on applications and making sure they will run on future JVMs, namely the Gradium. We are fully ECMAScript 2020 compatible and work hard to stay on the current frontier of, of language design in that area. We can run JavaScript applications on Gradium with very high, very good performance. And you can use all the features of GraalVM and integrate, for instance, with other programming languages or use the tooling that GraalVM provides. So if you need more information on that, please have a look at oracle.com slash GraalVM or reach out to us with, with your questions or, or use cases you found on, on Twitter to us. I also linked a blog post we recently did on the NAS1 migration to give you a bit more technical details, maybe what you need to do or the resources that help you to migrate your NAS1 application to GraalVM. So I thank you for joining today and I give back to Sean. Okay, well, thank you very much. That was really, really good. And uh, actually the link to the blog is, is quite Good, and it reminds me there are other blogs um, that people might be interested in. So there's one actually on um, multi-threaded uh, access between JavaScript and Java um, by Daniela Bonetta. Uh, 
that they can find on our Medium blog also. So if you're interested in more on GraalVM and, and JavaScript topics, uh, check out the Medium blog there. You can see medium.com slash GraalVM.